power Whether red or blue They could not care less about Texas Me and you They created this give me country That don't value hard work For a Texan to survive All we need are some seeds and dirt Texan arise Don't you hear your call Got to save your country For it's long gone. We believe in family and we value our community. Gladly lend a helping hand to a neighbor in need. And we don't believe that government should provide for all of society's needs. No, it's the pride of a Texan to give to others voluntarily. Texan arise, won't you hear your call? You gotta save your country, for it's long gone. Texan arise, won't you hear your call? You gotta save your country, for it's long gone. Our natural resources They don't want to see us driving trucks They'd rather see us riding horses And now they want to ban our guns You know, especially the ones that look scary But may I remind you of the Gonzalez Cannon And the Alamo heroes we bury Texas in our eyes Don't you hear your call we got to save our country From the Texas Constitution, Article 1, Section 1 and 2. Look it up. Texas is an independent state, yet presently we suffer. We no longer possess the right to locally self govern. And now it's time as a people in which all political power is inherent. And in such manner we find expedient We reform or abolish our government I said, Texas in a rise Don't you hear your call Got to save your country For it's long gone Texas in a rise Don't you hear your call Got to save your country Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we <laughs> here for here for the weekly coffee talk, and uh, I've got my coffee. I'm sure you guys have plenty of talk, and uh, it's been a been a pretty pretty busy day. Uh, not just today; it's been a pretty busy week. Uh, but we'll get into that here uh, in a moment. For those of you uh, joining us for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the time once a week where I take a break from the work that I'm doing because. I'm 
work all the doggone time, but I take a break from the work that I'm doing to help win Texas independence, uh, grab yet another cup of coffee and take some time to decompress. So uh, if you are brand new, glad you were here. And of course, for those of you who uh, show up here week after week for our uh, coffee therapy session, uh, thank you so much for your support and uh, for uh, you know, just, you guys are just way too kind. And uh, I, I love visiting with you, um, even if it is virtually over a cup of coffee once a week. So that being said, let's get uh, let's get all the kind of mechanics of this thing out of the way, right? Uh, if you're watching on uh, either of the YouTube channels, whether it's mine or the TNMs, be sure to uh, you know like and uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And uh, of course, you know when this is all over with, share, share, share. You got to do that. Uh, but also remember on the TNM YouTube channel, uh, super chat is active. So you can make a contribution over there. It goes straight to the TNM. Uh, if you're watching on any of the Facebook outlets whatsoever, uh, be sure to, uh, you know, if it's on the pages, you can like and share and comment. And, uh, you know, if it's in the groups, depending on the settings for that group, it may or may not uh, do whatever, you know, Twitter, retweet, Twitch, do the things that you're doing, Twitch. <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. You guys know the drill and, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely wherever you are interact with this video, right? Uh, that's what helps this, these videos get seen by more people. And, uh, you know, we, we want more people here, right? So, uh, that being said, let me do this because I wasn't able to do this last week. A quick reminder, if you are, um, before I get to talking about, uh, the, the questions and the comments, things like that, uh, I was asked where to follow on social media. I am everywhere on social media as the Texian DM. That's the Texian DM. And if you go to my website at danielomiller.com. Uh, you can see the social media buttons there. I think it's on the desktop version, probably on the mobile version too. But if you go there, you'll see uh, everywhere I'm at. Go there, please follow, 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 like, let's be friends. Let's do whatever it is. Got to build our network, right? So uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, remember, this whole thing is driven uh, each week by primarily either by what's on my, you know, kind of what I got to get out of my head, off my, off my chest. Uh, but primarily by your questions and your comments in chat. So if you're commenting uh, on the Facebook pages or, or participating in the chat on YouTube, uh, that is all aggregating on a little feed over here. Actually, I guess technically it's over there. There it is. For me, it's right there. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and Kara is monitoring tonight, as she does always, and she's going to be grabbing your questions. Uh, if you got questions and you will guide, uh, so much of, of what we talk about tonight, right? It is a conversation. So, uh, let's get down to it. Now I've got a couple things. First and foremost, uh, my coffee tonight, I'm actually double fisting, right? I got two different kinds. Uh, this one right here is, uh, you're going to, you guys will love this one. Uh, this is from Texas grounds coffee. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that here. I'll even turn it so you guys can see it. If you can't read the way that is, look. How you like that? Texas Grounds Coffee, right? Right there in Helotus. So uh, that's uh, in one cup. And in the other cup, our district director, Susan Williamson, her daughter has a roaster out of Johansson Farms. And so they make their own coffee. And uh, she sent me a bag of this when I filed to run uh, for lieutenant governor. And she brought me one at the training. Uh, this weekend, I got, got to see Susan. So, uh, really, really nice. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. I can already tell tonight's going to be fun because I'm seeing, I'm already seeing some fun things happen in chat. Um, like the person that's imploring folks not to deal with us. God, that's hilarious. I mean, geez, Louise. all right. So anyway, so double fisted coffee. So I'll be back and forth on these two. They are both fantastic. And, um, you know, I, I, I just, I love coffee. So thank you guys for bringing it. Uh, Nate Smith, our executive director brought this. He went visited with these folks out there in Lotus. And of course, as I said, Susan Williamson brought me this one. She's our district director out 
in the western regions of Texas. Now, uh, a couple of little, a uh, couple of announcements. <clears throat> All of you uh, petition circulators uh, were, you know, you you got an email, uh, and it said that if you hit a certain level of signatures, uh, you were going to get something special. And here in my hand, after several delays, here in my hand, ready to go out to you, is what you were getting. In fact, my friends, this is a custom Troy ounce silver coin, Texas on one side, the Alamo on the other, and this is, this is, ouch, sealed, of course, but this is going to you, right? So for those of you that, uh, that hit that mark, you know who you are, uh, be watching your mail because you will be getting one of these as a special thank you for the hard work and dedication that you put into the Texit petition campaign. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is going to be fun because I see Lori in chat uh, talking about uh, our convention booth. And Lori, that is on the docket for discussion tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so anyway, be looking for those coins and you know what, uh, let's, before I talk about the convention booth, because that came sort of later in the week, you guys know, um, yeah, covered last week that the speaking engagements that we had, had a couple of days off, uh, and then headed to, uh, Deer Park, uh, you know, right over there by the San Jacinto monument for leadership training. And so I got to spend the day. Um, really, I guess technically three days because we were there Friday and, uh, all day Saturday and, and a half a day on Sunday with, uh, other people in TNM leadership, district directors, local coordinators, uh, other members of the national leadership team that were there training, uh, and, you know, getting a, a much bigger and clearer picture of what the TNM is doing and where we're headed next. And, uh, you know, learning the, the, you know, drilling for skill. You know, learn, learning how to uh, go out there and, and be super effective, use the tools, adopt the mindset, things like that. And we just had a, uh, had, a had a phenomenal time out there. Uh, interestingly enough, and, and we actually don't even have it posted yet, um, before I left for leadership training, I recorded an interview for Real America's Voice uh, for the show Common Sense. And... Uh, We'll get that. We'll get that put up there, uh, uploaded to the YouTube channel probably tonight or tomorrow, right? Normally we try to get those things up there pretty quickly, but you know it's been a lot going on. So uh, anyway, on Saturday evening we got to travel out to the San Jacinto Monument and uh, got some phenomenal pictures. There's some group pictures flying around of all of our uh, you know local coordinators, district directors that showed up. And so uh, a personal thank you uh, if I did not get to visit with you before you left. Uh, a, a personal thank you from me to each one of you that traveled to come there to train, uh, to spend time, to get better, right? Because we, that's ultimately what we all want to do is we want to win and to win, uh, we got to be as, as skilled and efficient. And I mean, we got to be, got to be tough, right? You want to win the Super Bowl, you got to train like a Super Bowl champ. So that's, uh, that's where it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see somebody else is seeing that stuff in chat too. I, I'm going to. Tonight, this is going to be a fun one tonight. All right. So uh, leadership training, interview, all that was phenomenal. Had a great time doing that. Uh, we got back. And by the way, something happened this weekend. Um, many of you have sounded off that you just absolutely love the song that we kick off uh, the broadcast with. We end it with. And of course, that is uh, the, the, the song Texan Arise by our executive director, Nate Smith. No, uh, unlike some organizations, we did not buy it off of Fiverr, right? We actually have talented musicians and all kinds of things going. So anyway, that's Nate Smith's song. And, and many of you have um, have seen when we have been out on the road, uh, there was a T-shirt that was made that had some of the lyrics for Texan Arise on the front. And uh, the only place you could get it was literally if you connected with us on the road somewhere. At, at one of the booths that we were doing. Uh, well, uh, I got word right before the broadcast started that, well, kaboom, uh, that, that Texan Arise shirt is now available in the Texian store uh, on the TNM website, and you can get yours at tnm.me slash store. 
Uh, and, you know, something else you're going to notice when you go to the website is uh, some of you are accumulating store credit. Surprise. Shouldn't be surprised. It's been there all along. But anyway, if you want to know more about that, we can talk about that later. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's it's available. So uh, you guys have have asked for it. You've seen other people in the TNM wearing the shirt. That meant that they connected with us at, a, at an event where we had them. Uh, but now they're available on the store by request, by popular demand. So I was glad to uh, to get that uh, piece of information before we started tonight. So you can jump over there and get yours uh, quickly. Uh, all right, and you know, a reminder: those crazy mugs you guys asked about are on my store at danielomiller.com, and you can pick those up. All right, so uh, wow, uh, we got through all of the sort of announcements, things of that nature. Let's get down to the booth. Lori, uh, who is a phenomenal friend, a personal friend, friend of the TNM, she asked this in chat. She wants an update. On the TNM's booth uh, at the RPT convention, the Republican Party of Texas. Right, we were going to are going to do a um, do a uh, we're going to have a booth there. Right, obviously we didn't have one during the Zoom convention, uh, but we did one the uh, the convention before, and we were, if you recall, we were there partnered up next to uh, Defiance Press, um, the guys who published Bad Boy right here, right. And, um, you know, we were over there by their booth. They were the ones with the big Alamo. But anyway, we, we got to meet a, a lot of phenomenal people, right? And and we organized our efforts out of that booth. And so naturally, um, you know, we, we wanted to do it again during this convention. And it is um, pretty customary that once you were approved for a booth, um, you're, they, they don't unapprove you for future conventions, right? It's kind of kind of customary that, once you're through, you're through, and you don't have to go through this ridiculous song and dance every time, right? So um, we put in our application, and uh, we waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited some more. And then finally, we got to thinking, okay, look, is, is there something going on here? So I, I call uh, the executive director of the Republican Party of Texas, John Beckmeyer, because, you know, friends with John. John is a great guy. Call up John, say, John, we haven't heard anything. Is there anything we need to know about? He said he would check on it. He checked on it. And the committee that it's with in the SREC, the subcommittee or committee or whatever it is, is way behind. And assured him that it would be in the next batch that they process. So we waited, waited, and waited. And then on Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, after leadership training, after our Sunday morning kind of wind down powwow, I'll go grab a bite to eat with some of the folks before we all head back to our respective places in Texas. And I get a phone call from a member of the SREC who informs me that the current vice chair, Cat Parks, is on the warpath. Cat Parks is on the warpath because she does not want us to have a booth at the convention because she says what we're doing is unconstitutional. Now, Thank the Almighty that Cat Parks does not get a say. She doesn't get a vote. She just gets to run her, her mouth, slapping her gums together and talking all that tired drivel about how what we're doing is unconstitutional. You know, this is how, why it's so easy to embarrass people like that uh, in, in front of major crowds. Because these same people couldn't find the Constitution if it was glued to their butt and they were handcuffed behind their back. Right. So, you know, when they get up and they say this ridiculous stuff, that it's unconstitutional what we're doing, that it's illegal or treason or any of that other kind of, you know, drivel. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to be trying to be nice here. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just trying to self edit. Right. I'm trying to chop down my words for mixed company. You understand. But the bottom line is you have cat parks 
who is the vice chair of the Republican Party of Texas, who is doing her dead level best to ensure that an organization, ours, whose support comprises a majority of the party she purportedly represents, right, that embarrassed the chair and drove him into retirement, the chair before her, right, uh, before uh, Alan West, no, before James Dickey, sorry, Tom Meckler, right, the guy who looks like the cowboy from the village people, that guy, right, she wants to come after us. Now, now we're waiting for the video because allegedly the committee meeting was videotaped, right? I say videotaped. My God, what is this? 1980 something, right? It was recorded because <clears throat> it was held. Uh, my understanding is on zoom and, and we're waiting for that recording because when, when we get our hands on it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to chop that out. And we're going to play it for every one of you and we're going to post it out there. And then we're going to let you guys go tell cat parks to pound sand. Right, because it's, it, I look at it, it's akin to when Travis Clardy, um, you know that that doofus state rep, decided to refer to us uh, uh, essentially as cowards, right? Uh, as people who would have snuck out of the Alamo in the middle of the night, right? It, it's that kind of thing. We we don't take kindly to it. So an accusation like that that what we're doing is, you know, has some kind of taint to it of unconstitutionality or being illegal or like this dipstick over here in the uh, the YouTube chat who's talking about it being a Democrat ploy. Um, you know, those people, those people deserve to hear from all of us. They deserve to hear from all of us when we express our displeasure at, at them flapping their gums and making these ridiculous assertions. So be looking for uh, a, a something coming out on the TNM website that details all of this and action steps that you can take. And, and as of right now, we've heard nothing. We still don't know if we're getting a booth. We don't know if her uh, words, her, her little poison seeds have taken root. Uh, I doubt it very seriously because many of the people on the SREC know exactly who we are. They know what kind of people we are. And they also know that we don't, as an organization, take kindly to being mischaracterized and slandered in such a way, and that we will respond in kind. Okay. So, uh, bottom line, folks, is this: stay tuned. Um, we should hear something soon, but if we don't, maybe it happened. Right? We're going to work to the get get to the bottom of it. We still have friends and allies uh, on the state Republican Executive Committee, and uh, they're going to be working for us. So she can go uh, flap her gums all she wants to, but understand uh, that our people take action. Our people will make their voices heard too. And our voices together are far louder than those of Cat, the Closet Democrat Parks, right? So stay tuned to see how that pans out. Uh, so, Lori, that's where it's at as of today. Uh, there is, you know, I, we don't have any news beyond what that is, but we're still working. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so let's do this, right? I mean, I, I knocked out that stuff early because I want to get to your question. So let's, uh, let's do this. Boom. First question tonight from Chris Powell. He says, Daniel, can you please explain the I, I can't see that. Does that say wall or wait? Anyway, and say where the Texas legislative code. Okay, so this question is about whether or not delegates have to pay okay, to, to go to a, a political convention. And uh, what, we, what we found out to, in 2016 was that, and, and I can't cite the particular part of the, the uh, election code to you, uh, but we'll, we'll do some research and get that out to you. Uh, but one of the things that happened in 2016 was is that uh, many of our people who had been treated like garbage by then chairman Tom Meckler, uh, they were elected as delegates, but they were trying to force them to pay. And in the election code, uh, it was very clear at the time that they could not charge you to do your duty, right? So you were elected as a delegate. You're 
what your role is is specified in the election code. So therefore, they could not create a barrier to you doing your fulfilling your obligations under the Texas Election Code as a delegate to the political convention. So uh, what we'll do is we'll dig that out and find it. But many of our people didn't want, want to pay in protest because the leadership of the party had treated our people very, very poorly, right? They, they denigrated us. They treated us like garbage. And so many of our people didn't want to pay. They said, if I'm going to come here and I'm going to spend $200 a night on a hotel and I got to eat a bunch of food, you know, I got to eat out every meal and, and you guys are going to treat me like garbage, then the last thing I'm going to do is pay to be abused, right? And, you know, lo and behold, what, what was interesting about that is once Meckler was gone, all of those people in the party had no problems, uh, you know, paying, you know, joining their grassroots club or, you know, what, whatever it was, answering their appeals. But I can sympathize. I, I don't believe that, that we should pay to be abused. And if that's what's going to happen in the Republican Party of Texas, then I, I think it's perfectly fine if someone goes in there and invokes their rights under the Texas Election Code or uh, wherever that section is and says, I'm elected as a delegate and I'm not going to pay you to fulfill my duty and there's nothing you can do to make me. So there's that, <clears throat> but we'll, we'll get that information out there, Chris. Hmm. Uh, Anthony asks, can Texas print its own money now? It's a great question. Uh, I know many communities are doing it, but there is a question as to whether or not, you know, it's obviously as part of the, the state's relationship with the U S government in that federal system. Uh, states are forbidden under Article 1, Section 10 to coin their own money. But uh, the question becomes whether or not, uh, you know, print paper money, fiat money is actually covered in the coining of money. So uh, there is some controversy over that. Uh, I don't know any states that have done it, but there are plenty of, uh, of uh, communities that have instituted uh, their own currency. Uh, the Ithaca Hour is one that comes to mind, uh, and there are others. Uh, but it's it's a, a very interesting topic. Uh, I wish I could really dive off into it uh, a lot tonight, uh, but there there is, and and I think you know pre cryptocurrency, those alternative currencies uh, were were definitely one of the ways that people were looking for economic liberty, right? To decouple their economies from the U.S. monetary system, and unfortunately, uh, you know we never saw any of those really take off in. in competition. As a matter of fact, there was one, and I wish I could call the name of it right now, uh, that got into, you know, made, I mean, the federal government just absolutely cracked down on those guys. And, and it was, uh, it was, it was ridiculous, right? That the, what is the mafia doesn't like competition, right? And, uh, and that's uh, effectively what happened, but we can, we can do some, I'll, I'll do some, um, some research on that. Uh, well, let's make a note of that question because I, I do want to come to it because I think this is part of a, a larger conversation, not necessarily about, um, you know, kind of post Texas policy, but things that we can do in the interim. And we can talk about those alternative currencies. I think it opens up a much larger conversation about cryptocurrency and things that we can do as individuals in, in the meantime, between now and Texas, uh, to protect ourselves from the U S, uh, financial system, right? Inflation's getting ridiculous, and I, I think that's not the only challenge that we've got in relation to the U.S. economy and the U.S. dollar. So uh, something we need to be looking at sooner rather than later. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely make a note of that. I think we, we probably need to do some sort of special broadcast uh, where we talk about this thing specifically. So thank you for your question, Anthony. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah, uh, and Anthony had a follow-up. He says, I don't think we need to be independent first to print our own money. I, I don't think we need to be independent first to do a lot, you know, in other words, full independence, right? Hey, let me just throw this question up there so people can understand what we're saying. This is a question Anthony asked last week, right? And I didn't get to it because, remember, I can't get to every question, right? There's We have an hour together. Um, but wh whether we're talking about printing money or not, what we're talking about is decoupling from the, the federal monetary system, okay? And so your, your question is, you say you don't think we need to be independent first to print our own money. Uh, independence is not an act, right? It, it, is, it is a 
a state of being. Texit is a process that gets us to independence, and and we forevermore have to have to uh, guard that independence, right? The political, cultural, and economic independence of the nation of Texas. That's in our mission. Okay, so you know what you're talking about is not uh, whether we need to be independent or not, but can we do it pre-Texit? Can we begin the process of decoupling from the federal monetary system uh, prior to? Uh, the completion of Texas? And the answer is absolutely yes. We could literally do it uh, before the Texas referendum. Uh, as a matter of fact, and, and I talk about this uh, a lot out there on the road, is one of the provisions in the Texas Gold Depository Act uh, is, is the creation of a system of electronic transaction denominated by deposits uh, of precious metals in the depository, right? That was the snake heat. Big headline was, Texas gets its own Fort Knox. The real headline should have been Texas one step closer to a precious metals backed currency because that's effectively what it is. So, um, you know, it's just about timeline here, understanding what the definitions are, what the stages are. And if you're talking about doing everything we can to decouple from the federal monetary system, free Texas vote. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's something we obviously talk about all the time. <laughs> okay, this question comes from Stacy, who is uh, one of our brand new local coordinators on a brand new group uh, down there in San Antonio. She says, can the TNM start a campaign to Abbott's office to get the elevator fixed at the San Jacinto Monument? It's been broken since June, a disgrace. I I don't disagree with you there. Uh, we were all out there at the San Jacinto Monument, and the elevator's broken. But Abbott is not probably the appropriate person uh, to direct that to. Uh, in fact, uh, if you will note, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, were out there, um, and, and I believe that San Jacinto was managed by Texas Parks and Wildlife, so that would be it, or uh, the Texas Historical Commission, because they obviously um, – my guess is probably handle a lot of the preservation work out there, but something we can get into, um, you know, we want to do our dead level best to uh, not only maintain, but improve these key historical uh, markers, monuments, and memorials uh, and do everything that we can. In fact, uh, many years ago, uh, and it's been suggested that we start this back up as part of our, our cultural independence, right? Our cultural engagement uh, is we had volunteers that went out and restored historical markers. So, um, you know, just a lot of that kind of work. So, Stacey, I, I think we can absolutely do something like that, but not to Abbott. I mean, he, he would have to see what Ron DeSantis did first, and uh, DeSantis doesn't have an elevator or a monument that tall, so we'd be waiting, well, forever. They don't have anything they can do, right? Okay. Um, Let's find another good one. Okay, here's a great question. Uh, I like this one. How can we get Abbott to stop renewing his uh, March uh, 2020 state of emergency? He does not answer any inquiries I've sent. What a shocker, right? Now, oddly enough, this is so, this is, it, it surprises me how many people are surprised by this bit of news. But if you don't understand uh, what they're talking about, uh, because I can't can't really tell the name. It's a first initial. So anyway, um, Greg Abbott, since the initial emergency order for COVID, has renewed it every 30 days. Now, that includes right now, right? Renew, renew, renew. So when we were on the campaign trail, uh, and, and I busted out with that fact at an event, I thought people were going to fall out of their chairs. And I was shocked at how many people were not aware that this was still going on, but it's it's absolutely true, right? So um, about the only way that you can get Abbott to stop renewing is probably take his fountain pen away, right? Uh, or or hide the printer paper uh, because uh, unless you put tremendous pressure on him to end it, um, I don't see that he is has any sort of impetus to get it done right? To, to end that emergency order. Uh, but I think it's a fair question, right? I think it's a fair question to ask. And if more, and, and I know he hasn't responded to your inquiries, what a shock, right? But I think it's a fair question. If, if 
everyone started asking that question uh, out loud to everyone they could, uh, then maybe that would be enough to stop it. But it, it's it's a really valid question. Why is he renewed, renewing the COVID emergency order? We're, we're not locked down, right? Nobody Nobody's doing it. So what is it in that emergency? Order? What powers is he given as a function of that emergency order that make it so important that he renews it every 30 days? Question to ask. All right. Um, okay, here's a great question from Christina. Christina is one of our local coordinators, uh, and she is uh, she's one of our local coordinators. She's over in Tyler. She does a phenomenal job. In fact, uh, every monthly meetup, they're running a Texas Top Ten uh, that Christina has has put together herself, and, and she's doing a phenomenal job building the Tyler area, you know, and that's, that place is near and dear to me, right? So this is Christina's question. Uh, she says, how can someone be for convention of the States, but not tax it? I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't understand it. Um, you know, we, we run into people who are supporters of both. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't understand convention of States, but, that's been, and many of us don't here, here in the TNM, and, and part of that is because we're we're sort of past that fixing the federal system, right? We're we're beyond that. Uh, in, in fact, I, I literally wrote about it uh, in in the Texas book that it's unfixable, right? The federal government can't be fixed, and so um, you know we've talked about convention of the states before. I wrote an op ed back in God, I don't know twenty. 16, maybe, um, about um, the unequal treatment in the legislature of the Convention of the States versus the TNM and the Texas issue. Um, and so I, I don't know. You know, I, I honestly, if I'm looking at the two, I, I look at the, the concept of fixing the union uh, as more fantasy than reality, you know, and, and those people probably look at what we're saying is the same thing, but here's, what's interesting. I, I can look back over the last 75 or 80 years and see a track record of 150 brand new self-governing nation states around the world. Uh, and I've not seen evidence of a single, uh, article five convention that the convention of states is pushing for. So, uh, you know, if we're, we're looking at, at a track record of success, we have one to point to that points to Texas being the way as a global trend. And Convention of the States sort of being like, you know, really, is it fixable? Because it's it goes back to the question that we ask all the time, Christina, which is knowing everything you know about the federal government today, if, if the question before you was whether you wanted to join the union, would you today vote to join the union? And if you wouldn't vote to join, then you wouldn't vote to stay. It's not about what we might make of it, right? We, we've been We've been given the Pied Piper high in the sky promises on fixing the union forever. And, you know, it, it's like, okay, think, okay, you're going to fix the union. Okay. Every two years we, we get hit with congressmen. You elect me. I'm going to, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to clean house. And then every four years, it's a presidential election. We're going to go in there and the political party say, we're going to go in there. We're going to fix this mess. And it's not gotten any better. Right. You know, I, I took a trip down memory lane uh, when I was speaking in, I guess it was Cyprus the other night, where I talked about August 24th, 1996, and the things that blew me out of the box that got me involved in, in, in fighting for Texas independence. And, and I look at those things now, and, and those things are so small in comparison to how bad things are right now. I mean, if I thought in 1996 that the union is broken, right, today it has been ground into powder. It is shattered into pieces so small that you can't see them with a microscope. The debt, I mean, the debt or, or the devaluation of the money or the number of laws that we live under, right? Or the number of unelected bureaucrats that, have, uh, that we're subjected to or the number of times that our God-given inalienable rights have been attacked and usurped and taken away from us or you know, let's just take that little thing down south that we call the border with Mexico. Has that gotten any better? 
My first trip to the border to deal with this issue, to lay eyes on it, to give relief to ranchers was 2001. And I can tell you firsthand, it is worse than it's ever been. When more illegal aliens cross that border in one month than the troops that landed on the beaches of Normandy in World War II, right? And the federal government says, you know what, to hell with it. We're just going to kick these guys loose because we don't have the resources to deal with it. It's not the, the, if that's the case, the resource that they're lacking is will, is backbone, because they've got enough of our money to get it done, right? They've taken enough of our money to the tune of 103 to $160 billion every single solitary year, overpayment. We could have, with that money, built a wall all the way down the Rio Grande and made it 10 miles high. And they wouldn't have been able to fly a dadgum uh, airplane over it, right? They'd have had to launch a missile into space to get over that. We could have built that thing, right? We could have had the most well-equipped, trained Texas military department, right? Could have been one of the strongest militaries in the Western Hemisphere just with that overpayment over that amount of time, and we could have protected our border. Yeah, but it didn't happen. So while these guys are over there fiddling around with, well, let's try to do this convention thing and, you know, maybe maybe we'll be able to agree. Maybe we can get a balanced budget amendment. We're trying to say, boom, let's put a stop to this crap. Let's end it right now. Let's put a stop to it. No more. The answer that we have ends it all. No more unelected federal bureaucrats. No more 180,000 pages of federal laws, rules, and regulations. No more stealing our money and sending it off to other countries or other states for their failed social experiments or to line the pockets of K Street lobbyists. No more. Now Texas can take care of Texas. So I don't know how they could be for that uh, and not for Texas. But it's just me. I'm simple. You know, I, I believe if you have a cancer, you get it out of your body. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking. If I've got a cancerous mole on my skin, I'm looking to have it removed. I'm not looking to have a tattoo drawn around it that incorporates the mole, right? That's ridiculous. Cut it out. You get rid of it. And what we do as Texans is raise up and reclaim our fundamental right of self-government because that's all it is. Those guys want to go govern themselves and, and fiddle while Rome burns or play nearer my God to thee while the Titanic goes to the bottom of the North Atlantic, more power to them. We will be your friend. We will pray for you. We will trade with you. We will do everything we can to help you. But we will not be dragged to our demise by you and your indecisiveness and your neo-Marxist suicidal tendencies. It's not us. We're going to stand up and we're going to be a beacon of freedom and of liberty and of independence. And we're going to shine that beacon bright for anyone else that does not want to be a part of their slow Political suicide. Salute. Hmm. All right, uh, Christina. That was a that was a fun one. <clears throat> All right, uh, TJ Scott says, "Can he buy some of those rounds?" Uh, I'm going to assume that you're talking about this. Uh, and not like a round of drinks. Um, although, TJ, that would be really nice of you, but it's good to hear from you. Uh, the answer is no, uh, because those were special uh, for people who participated in the petition campaign and collected a certain amount of signatures. So while I would love to, uh, you, you, can't, you can't buy it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, here we go. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, howdy, all. This is Brad. Brad says, howdy, all. Just finished the Texit book, and yeah, I'm liking this idea. Just wish a TNM office was close to Splendora. Well, let me tell you. 
Uh, what I'm going to suggest that you do is head over to our website. All right, let me uh, let me hide this real quick and show you this. Boom, and there it is. Head over to our website uh, to this address: tnm.me slash local groups. That's tnm dot me slash local groups and find your nearest local group, right? They're all over. We got brand new ones popping all the time. And as I said at the very beginning, I, I just left a, a meeting, a training with a whole group of brand new coordinators. And I bet you dollars to donuts that there is a uh, local group spun up near you. But if there's not, you know what? That's easy to remedy. And there it is. You can organize a local group by going to tnm.me slash local and applying to be a local coordinator. But first, see if there's a local group in your area, right? And, and if there's not one near you uh, and you feel compelled to do so, jump in, right? We always need leaders. And uh, if you are that leader, then reach out to us. Let's make it happen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's get back down. Yeah, so Brad, hey, glad you're liking the book, Brad. And um, keep, keep doing your study. Connect with anybody in the t and uh, if you have any questions and, and want to know more and get more involved because it's one thing to sort of know this stuff, right, to get this in your head. But it, it's absolutely useless if, if you don't take action based off of what you know, right? Uh, okay, here's a question. Uh, David wants to know when is the TNM going back to Pork Fest? Okay, so those of you who do not know, last year Nate and I participated. Uh, we were invited to uh, to participate in a panel discussion in New Hampshire uh, at an event called Pork Fest, and, and it's not a misspelled pork. It's for porcupine, right? It's a libertarian kind of a event that they do out at Rogers Campground. Uh, but anyway, we were invited to participate in a panel, and we were there with uh, representatives from the uh, Foundation for New Hampshire Independence, uh, Americans United for Peaceful Separation, and uh, the folks from Cal Exit participated virtually. Uh, we were there and had a phenomenal time. And my understanding is uh, that they are organizing it currently and that we will uh, very likely be invited again. So uh, I'm looking forward to our next big event where we can, you know, reciprocate and invite those guys. We'd love for them to come down and experience Texas hospitality. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm anticipating that, uh, we'll be getting an invitation any day. now. Thank you for your question, David. Okay. Let's get down to it. Okay. This is, this is a good one. And, and I don't know that I'm going to have a full answer for you. Right. Uh, Keith says, good evening, Daniel. Can you explain the statute that allows Texas citizens to deposit gold into Texas chartered banks? Uh, and by the way, Keith, I appreciate you too. Uh, the, the question is a good one. It, and actually, I talked about it a moment ago, the Texas Gold Depository Act, right? Uh, the Texas Gold Depository Act created a state-owned gold depository, uh, and it is in Leander. And as a matter of fact, if you go to the search engine of your choice, and uh, look for and search for Texas Gold Depository Leander, uh, you will find a link to that very place. And uh, it'll have everything you need to know about it there. Um, and look, I mean, it's obvious that you, you don't, there are going to be other banks that will accept deposits of gold. But um, I, I got to tell you, we have a sort of a special place for this one because were it not for us, uh, we very likely wouldn't even have that option. And for us, it was an economic independence or an economic sovereignty issue because at the time, the gold, the physical gold that was being invested in by various Texas sovereign wealth funds, you know, funds owned by the state, uh, was being housed in HSBC Bank in Manhattan. And it's like Texas owns the gold. It's our gold. Why isn't it in Texas, right? So we were just glad to, to uh, you know, be kind of there at the very beginning of that. You know, it's not a bill that we drafted. Uh, but we were we were drafted to help get it across the finish line, and um, we we did our dead level best to get it done, and, and very proud that we did get it done. So uh, go do that. Go take a search uh, search engine of your choice. Search for Texas Gold Depository uh, and Leander. Leander is where it is. So thank you for that question, Keith. All right, man. We're blowing through them this week. It's a good one. Even after I got all wordy, Christina's question and pounded the table. Do you know how long it's been since I I, I did a, a, a table pounding 
on one of these broadcasts. I, I think it might have been like radio time back when I was just doing audio only broadcasts. <sighs> that's that's hardcore right there. That's when you know the preaching and the coaching has begun. Coffee's good. I am not going to lie, but it's almost empty, which means we are almost at the end of our journey tonight, folks. Um, let's see what we got here for questions. Uh, okay, here's a question. El Scorpio Perfecto. Man, that is a cool screen name. <laughs> That's really awesome. Uh, this question came in on YouTube. Will there be a Texas rally coming? All I can tell you is no spoilers. Stay tuned. Uh, and when the time comes for, and I'm not confirming nor am I denying that this is taking place, uh, but when the time comes, just like any type of event we do, it is so important that you participate, right? Not just you. I mean, all of you that you participate because our planning for future events is completely based on the level of participation we get. So, you know, a good example, when, um, you know, when we get asked to come out to a certain area of Texas and hold events, uh, and, you know, we get a lot of, we get a lot of people say, come out when we go out there to do an event there and all those people that were clamoring, uh, don't show up. Well, guess what? That kind of takes a little notch down the priority list. Not that we're upset, but you know, we have a finite amount of resources. We don't have we don't have access to Elon Musk bank account, right? It's not a there's not a never end. It's not a money tree in the backyard that we can go pluck, right? So we got to be real good stewards with our our resources. And and the fact of the matter is is that we have to set priorities. And when it comes to doing these in person events. Uh, whether it's rallies or workshops or whatever it is, where we do that is not solely based on how many people send emails and, and say, why don't you come to my area and do this? It's it's all based on the level of engagement that we have when we do those events. So it is super important, whether it's rallies, whether it's workshops, whether it's meetups, whatever it is, connect with us and and. and connect with us and do things in person, right? Virtual's great, right? We can talk to a lot of people all at one time, but these in-person events, look, I cannot stress enough how important it is uh, for you guys to get out and, and support these local meetups, right? You've got local coordinators that are stepping up. They're saying, look, I will take a leadership. Position. I will stand up and be the public face for Texas independence in my community. I will be here to represent the TNM. And I will uh, take all this time and I will organize uh, outreach events and meetups and get speakers and, and, you know, just really pour themselves into it. So I, I can't stress enough how, how important it is that all of you connect with a local group in your area. And when we do regional events or do these big national events, it's imperative that you participate. Do whatever it takes, Right. I can, I can tell you right now that the people that left that leadership training this weekend uh, left with a very different perspective on how Texas independence is going to happen uh, and, and a different sort of passion and fire for getting it done. And and that's what you that's what we all need all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so. Let's get her done. So, El Scorpio, all I can tell you is maybe or maybe not, um, you know, you may or may not get an email or phone call or see an ad. I can neither confirm nor deny. Fun stuff. Um, Yeah. Okay. This is a great, this is a great question. This is going to be the final one. Cause I'm almost out of time and I know this is going to take some time. So, uh, for everyone, Oh, before I do this one, uh, one thing that we have got, uh, this brand new this week, you guys will dig it. Uh, let me find it here. Boom. There it is. <clears throat> we are adding this. It's already set up. If you have questions or comments and you want to try to get Jump in line, you know, get get to the head of the queue. 
Uh, email them over to coffee talk at the TNM.org. That's coffee talk at the TNM.org and uh, get them in early, right? Keeps us, uh, you know, not, we'll still take live questions. Don't never fear. But if you've got something that you would like to, to send over, uh, absolutely do it, right? If you have a question, and especially if it's one of these that's going to involve some research, like what is this in the text, you know, something like that, uh, please send it over. Again, no guarantee that we could get to every question. Uh, we do what uh, what we can, time permitting. But uh, if you do email your questions in, it would be great, right? So let's make that happen. All right, here we go. Final question of the night. Let's get down to it. Okay. Corey says, good afternoon. Uh, do you believe that one of the reasons the U S is struggling so much is due to its size as a nation Can a nation of 330 million people from all across the globe, be a successful Republic or must there be more cultural cohesion? Uh, so it, it's, it's interesting that you phrase it this way because this is to me, and I talk about this, I actually it's something I talked about in, in the book line in the sand, right? The, predecessor to the Texas book. But, you know, the, the idea, uh, and actually I do talk about it in Texas too, but I, I think a little more in depth in the line of the sand, but the, the idea is right here in your question, right? Is that you say, um, one of the reasons you're struggling so much due to its size as a nation. Now, when you understand that the original intent for the union was not to be a single monolithic nation of a single people, right? But it, it is structured, in fact, as a federa federal union of 50 independent, sovereign, self-governing nation states, right? That was always the intention. The states were never supposed to be mere administrative subdivisions of the federal government, and nor was it meant to be a nation. The United States was never meant by the founders to be, or the framers, to be a nation. Uh, and in fact, part of the challenge that we have, right, a lot of the challenges that we see is with the perpetuation of this idea of an American nation, right? We, we hear it in the Pledge of Allegiance, not, which I talk about in the book, Right, we we are constantly bombarded with this idea that it's a nation, but it's functionally and structurally not that way. So they have to continue to do it. So the fact is, is that we are structured to be one thing, but the federal government is behaving in another way, and the states are somewhat caught in, in the middle of trying to retain their sovereignty while the federal government pulls it away under the guise of this this monolithic nation. Okay. So my, my, my thought here, and, and I talk, again, I talk about it in Texas is that, uh, if, if you were to turn the clock back and the federal union, including the federal government was back in its box, you know, doing only the things that it's supposed to, and the 50 independent self-governing nation states of the United States of America, <clears throat> were to uh, you know exercise their full sovereignty, then we would not be in this mess, right? We we wouldn't be in this situation because we would all effectively be governed in by our state where it's supposed to be, right? Our independent, with the exception of a few functions. And when you look at the Constitution as written, you realize that a as a document, everything is very limited, right? For on the federal side. It's pretty much a a, a trade uh, a uh, not a trade union but a uh, a free trade agreement right uh, a travel agreement a, po a smattering of a, a postal union uh, a currency union which I think it's debatable as to whether it should be that but that's another story but a currency union and a mutual defense pact that's literally what it is right and, and to have a a common foreign policy so they can act in that way, in, in one way, and have a common foreign policy. But l literally, that's it. That's the box. Now, think about what the federal government does outside of that and how it encroaches on the states or does not take care of the things it's supposed to take care of. So bottom line is because the, the people in the states of the United States are double-minded, this is why you see so many structural difficulties. And, and I think that you have to address that question or, or talk about that issue 
uh, right alongside the other part of your question, which is one about politics of scale. Now, you've heard me perhaps talk on here before uh, about uh, a man that I considered a very dear friend of mine uh, who has since passed uh, named Dr. Thomas Naylor. Uh, he was a professor emeritus of economics at Duke University, founder of the Second Vermont Republic, and that was one of the things, his kind of chief things that he harped on repeatedly was that the United States has grown too much to be governed under a central authority, right? So you have the structural argument that says that the structure and the original intent of the union is very different than the way that it's portrayed today and the way that it's administered today. And that divergence causes so many of the problems that we have. Okay, So you could use that. But right on top of that, I think you could make the argument for politics of scale and say that it has grown, the, the number of people and the number of states have grown too large to be managed under one sort of central authority. So I think it, I think it, I think it really kind of forces us, if you're going to look at this academically, right, I think it forces us to think about whether or not, even with Texas withdrawing from the union, what a post-Texas relationship with other states would look like, right? You know, and this is part of the aversion that that I think we have in the TNM to, you know, having a, another union on the side of this because we don't want to leave one union to enter another one, right? Because we can do business as a nation with other nations as is done without having to surrender any of our sovereignty to people that we didn't elect forcing policies on us that we don't want. So we can execute trade deals and travel agreements and, you know, set up embassies and, and, you know, we can have mutual defense agreements and, and things of that nature as independent self-governing nations do around the world every single solitary day without being part of some absolute political and economic union. So I, I, you know, thank you for your question, because it, I think it is an important thing for us to talk about, you know, whether whether we're sitting around just kind of pondering the idea of Texas independence uh, or pondering what's going to happen with the United States, because whether it is the structural versus, uh, you know, the, the, the structural inconsistencies that we see, you know, the the idea versus the the reality, the clash that we see there. That, that causes the problems or the politics of scale. By either measure, the United States of America as an institution, as headed by the federal government, is in serious, serious, serious trouble. So another good reason for Texas independence, right? Let us stand as a nation among nations. Let's reclaim our right of self-government and not have to answer to a bunch of unelected bureaucrats, Right. Let's take back control of our own destiny. All right. Well, guys, that is going to be it. Um, let's just go get this thing done, right? Uh, I, I'm excited. A lot of good things coming up this week. Um, you know, I mean, it's just I, I can't even get into it all because I've been answering questions. But let me go ahead and remind you. Uh, if you are not already a member of the Texas Nationalist Movement, please join us. Head over to tnm.me slash join. That's tnm.me slash join. Join the movement today. And, of course, uh, if you have not volunteered, jump in the fight. We need all hands on deck. Head over to tnm.me slash volunteer. That's tnm.me slash volunteer. Uh, additionally, this is going to be super, super important. If you need to find out more about Texit, head over to texitnow.org where we answer all of your questions, as many as we possibly can get to, right? I mean, there's like a hundred of the most asked questions over there. And then, of course, you know, you can always pick up a copy of this bad boy. Uh, you can get it on either tnm.me on the TNM store uh, or the Texian store, or you can head over to my website at danielomiller.com and get your copy. All right. Uh, it's time to go. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in, uh, joining us. Uh, this is always the highlight of my week, and uh, I, I just look forward to it every single solitary week. So thanks for uh, sharing an evening cup of coffee with me. Let's get out there. Let's go win, right? And I will leave you with the words that I leave you with every week, the words of Sam Houston when he said that Texas will again lift its head and stand among the nations. 
I believe that time is now. And the question is, will you stand with her? Good night, everyone.